Okay, quick question. Um, what would happen if I, so I've been doing this in air. What if I did this in another medium, say underwater? Would anything change? So think about the two conditions for constructive and destructive interference were d sine theta is equal to m lambda for constructive and d sine theta is equal to m plus one half lambda for destructive. So some people say increases, more people say decreases, and a few of you say remain the same. Okay, so how do we figure this one out? Clearly, there's some confusion about how to think about this. So once again, if we look at these two relationships I've written up here, what tells you what the separation between the minima and maxima is? So what tells us the answer? What in that equation refers to that quantity I'm asking for, the separation? Anybody? What should I be looking at? Or is there anything in that equation that helps me? Yes. So what will happen with the wavelength? Why does it get smaller? So we are now in water. So the, we are in a medium of higher refractive index. So what will change about the light? Its speed will change, and so will its wavelength. So the wavelength will be smaller. So if the wavelength is smaller as compared to A, what happens to the sine of the angle? It also gets smaller. So at least for the sake of locating each fringe, the angle to locate each fringe is going to be smaller, and therefore the separation between the fringes is also going to be smaller. Okay? So yes, it decreases. Okay? So the way you proceed is you look at this equation and say, what's going to change in this? Well, D is physically fixed. Um, M is just the order of the fringe, so lambda is the one that's changing. If lambda gets smaller, sine theta gets smaller because D is not changing. And if sine theta gets smaller, then each theta is smaller, and therefore the fringes are closely spaced, more closely spaced. 